Hi, my name is Scott Turnbull, and I like making stuff. Site-specific work that deals with architectural motifs. I like making stuff. Sometimes I burn projects that I make in order to let go of the preciousness of the object. I thought it'd be really interesting to physically create this transition or this transcendence from the real that we all experience together into this imaginary, intimate place. I was trying to see what that would look like. How would I construct something that would represent making this transition between your everyday life and how you view the world and then imagining yourself as a different person or a smaller person and getting to explore all these different possibilities. I think it's sort of opening people up to the possibility that everyone, everyone is a child inside and I don't think we should lose touch. It's all about giving people the ability and the chance to explore a different world on their own terms and uh, giving them the freedom to interpret any way they want. Why I like creating these worlds to give people the opportunity to kind of have, have some fun with their own thoughts and their own, uh, uh, their own imagination. When I was younger, we grew up in the Sierra Nevada mountains just outside of Yosemite. And then we moved to the central coast of California when I was you know, about 10, kind of sleepy surf town. The tension Growing up in a, in a very kind of rural setting and then moving and being close to you know, cities nearby, I, I was sort of introduced to this, this tension, this contrast between the urban environment and the natural environment. And uh, a lot of my work deal with this tension, this contrast between you know, what uh, humanity creates and, and its relationship with the environment. The conveyor skate piece was the first in a series of vending sculptures. they represented a portion of the natural world and that the viewer could participate in altering that world by inserting money. One of these vending machines was called a landscape dispenser. And essentially you paid, you put 50 cents in and it dispensed one little, I'd say six by eight landscape and put it onto a conveyor belt and then it set it down into a shredder so essentially the landscape is altered by means of the viewer and their participation by using money. It's the metaphor. Our very direct and indirect role is changing where we live and changing the planet, you know, and uh, all the way up until, you know, global warming. It's in everyone's consciousness now. I think I was just, I guess, wanting to say that in a way that, that it's not normally expressed. My dad's a musician, so he's much more cerebral. He's not a builder. And, uh, and it's funny because that, that experience has made me who I am too. It's like, I want to know how to build this stuff. I was like almost afraid to ask because I resented authority so much. So that I got into this, this whole thing of making my own worlds, my own systems. Because I can, and no one can tell me that I can't do that, and, or I'm doing it wrong, or, or whatnot. 
I have one of those real cushy little jobs called remodeling. Because you gotta make a living too. <laughs> About a boardwalk is merely this metaphor that allows people to explore their own pathways through life. And uh, as simple as that sounds, I think it's really powerful and minimal in that, in that sense. Divergent paths, one of the situations that I was dealing with at the time dealt with a relationship that um, kind of, uh, I don't want to say ended badly. I felt like how can, how can one grow from this experience? Right. Uh, not only that, but also, you know, at the crossroads of my life, you know, um, in my 30s now and thinking about what I want to do to make money and how do I keep making art and what's the side job going to be and how do I get property and, you know, all of these things going on. So I felt like, wow, you know, creating this, this metaphor for all of these things going on in my life seems totally appropriate. The seemingly uncomfortable times in my life have actually, I look back at them and look at these were good things. And to say that that was a terrible time in my life is, is valid, but at the same time makes you who you are. One of the pieces, you know, artists in his studio and it sort of represented as this huge ascent to this, this cage or this gibbet. It's my own self-imposed rulemaking that I should stay in one spot for months making some art. Art is, is glorious and it's also one of the most frustrating things I've ever done in my life. Most of the things that I've made have been sort of in extension, my means and needs to communicate how I feel about the world. And I, I, I think artists do that in many different ways. And being very, very shy guy, um, that's kind of how I speak and try and communicate through what I do in a very personal but a very universal way. I think if you're just doing it wholeheartedly that you will inspire people. Um, you will get people motivated. Um, but I think you know, artists should really, really strive to try and tackle things that are bigger than themselves. I think everybody should try and tackle on things that are bigger than themselves or else nothing will change. <laughs>